A report from the Washington Post says President Trump shared highly classified information with the Russian foreign minister and ambassador at a meeting last week. Ed O'Keefe is a CBSN contributor and congressional reporter for the Washington Post. He joins me now via phone. Ed, what can you tell us about this breaking news? Basically, uh, Don, the president had this meeting with the Russian foreign minister and the ambassador and is believed to have shared information regarding the Islamic State from one of our allies in which we have an intelligence partnership uh, and in which he was not authorized to share. Uh, under any other circumstance, a government official could be charged with a crime, essentially, for sharing this information. The president obviously is not like other government officials and can declassify information uh, at his behest. But this signals that the president, uh, at least in the view of government officials who spoke with my colleagues, Greg Jaffe and Greg Miller, uh, were concerned enough by what the president did that they quickly moved to try to patch things up with the intelligence partner. We're not releasing, obviously, the identity of that intelligence partner that we have, uh, another country, it's presumed, uh, and we're not sharing details of what exactly the president told Russian officials. But this came during that meeting that the president had the morning after firing the FBI director and a meeting that U.S. reporters were not allowed to witness in the Oval Office. Only a Russian news agency photographer was there to capture the moment. And, of course, that caused a lot of intrigue as to what exactly the president was doing and saying in that meeting. The report that we've just published there begins to lay out some, at least, of what the president told Foreign Minister Lavrov and other Russian officials. Yeah, and it was not only the foreign minister and ambassador there, but they had their aides in the room, evidently, according to the Washington Post report, as well. And part of the concern seems to be that it would not be too difficult for Russia and perhaps others they shared this information with to discern methods and assets used in gathering this intelligence about a, a potential terrorist attack by ISIS. Correct. And we should point out that the National Security Advisor, H.R. McMaster, in a statement in that story, doesn't deny that the president did this, but makes clear that he didn't reveal any of those methods. But that, as you said, uh, doesn't mean that the Russians couldn't step away from this with the information they have, begin to disseminate it, do the math, and then perhaps figure out some things that they wouldn't have otherwise been able to sort out. And remember, Don, this comes while we're awaiting word from the administration about a new FBI director as questions continue swirling about what the president did last week in removing the FBI director and the fact that he concedes uh, that perhaps it had something to do with the ongoing investigations into Russian involvement in last year's elections. You know, to, to reveal this information to, to Russian officials before it's disseminated widely, even in the U.S. government or with close allies, will bring a lot of concern to lawmakers who literally are returning to the Capitol at this hour for a vote to take place later in the Senate. The House won't be back until tomorrow evening, so we may not really be able to gauge full congressional response to this until Wednesday. But this just adds yet another wrinkle to the ongoing web of stories and conflict and concern surrounding Russia's engagement in our elections last year and the Trump administration's response to ongoing investigations about it. Yeah, it really is astounding. And, and of course, as, you, as was pointed out in the article, this wasn't even, this intelligence didn't even belong to the United States. It was shared by an intelligence partner in another country, another agency, and there are strict rules about where that can be disseminated. You must go back to the originating party to be able to, to share it with some other entity. Uh, and, and the fact that it's related to the word Russia alone with everything that's been going on with this administration uh, is astounding. You made a point earlier that I want to explore a little bit more about how any other uh, official would even would face serious consequences for sharing perhaps some of the most type, the highest level classified information, which this is, it's, I believe you used to, uh, the term code word uh, classified information. And yet, because the president has the authority to declassify anything that he wants, he probably will not face any kind of legal jeopardy in this case. But in, in the reporting, and again, this was, this was um, we don't have firsthand tapes to use the word of the day, but uh, in the reporting, this struck you as something 
that he did impulsively, not with consideration. It wasn't like he was trying to build a bridge here. He was just talking about how great the intel he gets all the time. He gets great intel every day. And then he goes on to talk about this particular intel about ISIS trying to use laptops as, as uh, bombs. Well, yeah, and, and that's and that's what the, the story is inferring. And, and look, I, I didn't report this story. It was my colleagues. But, but yes, I think the inference here from the folks that they spoke with makes clear that there is concern that the president is flippantly sharing sensitive and classified information, the most classified information that's out there. We can recall from the transition period between the election and Inauguration Day, I know the Washington Post and others wrote stories about intelligence and other government officials being concerned about whether or not uh, this president would be able to disseminate information given to him and and keep it from getting out into the public sphere. Right. Uh, I know others across the, the government, both uh, in the legislative and executive branches, have expressed those concerns. This would seem to suggest that the president casually discusses such things with foreign counterparts, not even foreign counterparts, right. just foreign officials. Yeah, Russians, they're and, not uh, considered our allies. That's That's the amazing thing about this. And he wasn't sharing it with a head of state. He was just sharing it with the foreign minister of an adversary. So uh, th this is the kind of thing that is going to cause great concern among Democrats and Republicans. I think one of the things, Don, and we don't want to sound like we're cheerleading or egging them on or urging this, but one has to wonder. We've seen the Democratic outcry to what the president did last week regarding the FBI director, to all of his actions and, and behaviors and comments on the ongoing Russia probe. At what point does it start to compel more Republican lawmakers to speak out and raise concerns publicly. We know they're doing it privately. We saw the Senate Minority Leader Chuck yeah. Schumer and other Democrats yesterday suggest that privately Republicans continue to express concerns. What becomes the tipping point that compels them to start speaking out more publicly to try to put distance between themselves and the White House, especially as polling released over the weekend and today continues to show that the president is an unpopular figure, the decision he made last week is one that is not supported by a majority of Americans, and that Republicans could very well feel the heat in next year's, next year's midterm elections, if not before. Well, and uh, of course the irony is how critical the president was of his adversary during the campaign and the emails right. that, that uh, Hillary Clinton was a party to, which evidently w contained references to classified information, but contained no actual classified documents. And then he uh, allegedly is telling these people from Russia, definitely classified information. You just, you have to wonder, he was elected as an outsider, as a successful businessman. But the downside of that could be ignorance of diplomatic subtleties and these kinds of things within the intelligence community that could actually damage our relations with other countries. Right. I mean, we don't reveal uh, who, who, these, who this intelligence partner is. I don't know who it is, but uh, clearly that, that intelligence partner uh, on the other side of the world right now is probably reading this and very concerned about what they're seeing and uh, making some follow-up phone calls if they haven't already been alerted to it. And, and yes, and of course, this comes just days before the president heads off on his first overseas trip as commander-in-chief to the Middle East and to Europe for a series of high-level diplomatic meetings with the G20, with NATO, and with Middle Eastern leaders, So it will, and Arab leaders. It will be, it will be very tricky for him now, conceivably, uh, as this report lands and as people respond to it around the world. You know, Ed, uh, I'm sure the Post is like it is here at CBS, where when reporters are working on something, there's discussion in the newsroom about it. So I imagine editorially there has been some discussion. What is the feeling there at the Post as to where this is going to go? I know this just broke. It's just out there now, so we can't tell. I'll be interested to see Sean Spicer's press briefing tomorrow and see how he addresses this. But what's the feeling at the Post? Well, I, I look. I'm not in. I'm not in management, so, and I wasn't involved in editing this story. But I've been uh, poised to deal with the political fallout, and I think I think the uh, that that will come. It could come here in the next few minutes and hours from both sides. And and I think what we know is that this will inevitably add to the growing concerns and the calls for special prosecutors and 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 further investigation into what the president or his campaign was doing with Russian officials. And there'll be concerns, frankly, about how the government is operating and whether or not the president himself and the people around him are treating this top secret, most sensitive classified information mm -hmm. properly, especially in the presence of adversary. I think all of it just continues to raise questions about his judgment, about the judgment and the experience of those around him. 
and uh, and this does not help uh, the ongoing web yeah. of questions and and concerns that surround this president and his administration when it comes to Russia.